dashing through the mud. In a one tractor open sleigh, over the weeds we go, a laughing all the way. Hammers on anvils ring, making knife edges bright. Oh, how fun it is to laugh and sing a sledding song tonight. Oh, wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle all the way. Oh, how fun it is to ride in a one tractor open sleigh. Hey, dashing through the mud in a one tractor open sleigh. Over the weeds we go, a laughing all the way. Hammers on anvils ring, making knife edges bright. Oh, how fun it is to laugh and sing a sledding song tonight. Oh, wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle all the way. Oh, how fun it is to ride in a one tractor open sleigh. Hey! Ho, 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 green Griggs. I was gonna say Santa Claus, right? <laughs> So what I get accused of being right, maybe I am. Because what I do, sleds. I have sleds. Worm bed sleds. You know, Santa Claus has got to have some wormholes to get in all the little houses. I got a whole train of them. I've already started pulling them in the woods. We got a whole new innovation here in worm farming. So, Greg, why worm bed sleds? The reasons are several. One, they are uh, cheap to build. Uh, they're more durable than the wood. They are price competitive, maybe cheaper in the wood because I can get an IBC tote for, you can get them for uh, the 275 gallon size for about, oh, $105 where I get them already cleaned out, food grade, with no contaminants in them. That's great. So, you know, I don't have to add much to them, just cut them up. And this, by cutting them in half, I've got almost, and flipping them over, I've got almost as much room as a, one of my plywood boxes, which has been my best worm bed to date, the raised boxes, because I've had less problem with moles in them than I do the in-ground beds. I've got in-ground beds and I've rebuilt them too to control moles, and so far that's working. I'll have to do some videos on my in-ground beds and a video on building the wooden boxes. I know some of you viewers want to see that, so some of you may not want to do this project. You can always cut IBC totes. Why sled, Greg? They got... These things are made for forklifts. I mean, yes, the bottoms are great for forklifts. If you cut them in half, only one side is good for a forklift. But you know what? I can't operate a regular forklift right here because if I do, it's going to mire down. I built a pad for this barn and I packed it down, a, a clay pad, and I packed it and packed it. You can't really see it, it's so dark in there. And packed it and packed it and packed it. And I hoped I could use a forklift to raise those upper logs up there. And that thing, I drove it in here and it got stuck right off the bat. I mean, it just buried down. You know, I thought I had that clay packed real hard. So what I did is I spent a lot of money to rent a forklift and a lot of money to get a record. I get it out. I got no logs lifted at all. That was a big waste. Uh, there are field grade type forklifts, but those are huge machines. They cost a lot of money and they're big. You can't get them in and out of places real easily. Well, the tractor, I can slide these in and out real easily in the woods. And I can pull them from either side. No forklift required. This tractor can get in and out of my woods real nicely. <laughs> forklift can't even get down the road. So uh, forget forklifts. Uh, this is a woods operation. Anything in the woods or field, I do not recommend forklifts for. If you got a concrete pad, you're in a factory, uh, you got asphalt, fine. But for what I'm doing, uh, it just don't fit. The great, other great thing about the worm bed sled is this. I can fill them up with manure right here. And then I can drag them off into the destination instead of wheeling that out in wheelbarrows. It would take several wheelbarrow loads to fill up one of these. And if I'm harvesting worms, I can just bring the worm bed sled right back here and bring it to my trauma harvester, which is right here. I gotta clean out some of this junk to make it work, but I can bring my worm bed sled in here and run my trauma harvester. And uh, when it's done, I can fill it up with manure and take it right back. Pardon me for shooting in the dark, but that's the way time allows me sometimes. I think the greatest innovation I've seen in worm beds, because it should be uh, critter proof. They should be big enough with enough thermal mass uh, to keep my worms stable here. And I can just drag them in and drag them out and process them. Eventually, I will set it up where I can just tip them over right into some kind of conveyor or hopper and let the stuff go straight into the trauma without having to fork it out of here. Now that will be cool. Maybe even I'll do some kind of hopper for loading and dumping them in when they get big and 
automated to some greater degree. Maybe an off-fill site. But anyway, worm bed sleds, great for the woods and great for uh, worm greenhouses or worm shade cloth houses, which is far more appropriate in this neck of the woods. So there it is, a, a train of worm sleds. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, maybe I am Santa. I do have my sleds. And, hmm, this might be blitzing, but it is a Kubota, which I affectionately refer to as my geisha mule. And keep it under the shade, and the worms will have it made. And this is the best place to raise worms. It was an adventure building these. And so watch this video, and you're going to see the full details on how to make the sled bed worm bed. And uh, be sure to uh, subscribe to my channel. Click uh, update notification bell to get all my videos on and notifications on all the videos I want to do about raising worms. And check out the uh, videos I've already done on raising worms and many other videos that I've done on growing your own food, eating wild edibles, prepping, why you need to prep. And you'll also see videos coming up on all these topics. That's why you don't click the update notification bell after, of course, you subscribe. We're going to have food prices skyrocket in the near future, I do believe. Uh, that's why you need to grow your own food. And to do that, you need seeds. Check out heirloom seeds, which you need to have. Heirloom seeds enable you to replant. And so you can grow your own stuff. Check out Truly Market below for heirloom seeds. My Patriot Supply for pay, uh, prepping supplies. Again, www.greengregs.com for worm supplies. And this is going to be a fun video. Hope you enjoy it. And you're also going to get to see some wild tractor rides as I'm pulling these worm beds around and running through the woods with them. Hope you enjoy. I'm going to show you how to build a worm bed out of an IBC tote. What we're going to do is we're going to take this grinder and we're going to cut the metal rungs here to cut this in two pieces. And then we're going to use, we could either use a grinder like this or certain saws and we can cut the uh, plastic too. And we're going to lay it over and make uh, two worm beds out of one tote. So this is how we're going to do it. Don't do like me, wear some kind of eye protective cover when you're using these things. Hey, I'm the guy that pulls bars up bare hand them nuts. Now, you know, these things, you have to change the blades out fairly frequently. I wasn't reaching through here because the blades were getting a little too short. The tools come with these things to change them out with. Don't ever lose your tool because then you're in trouble. But essentially, I'm going to finish cutting. I think I got that one. Get this thing going again. Okay, now we got this thing cut in two. All we gotta do is open it up. If it's totally cut, I think we can like place here, maybe. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, I got that. Just a little sliver of plastic. Nothing a handy dandy pocket knife won't take care of. Now you can't be a self-respecting redneck and not carry a pocket knife. So now we gotta do take them apart. Oh, I got another place. But again, that's definitely within a realm of something a pocket knife can trim. And well, that's a bigger piece by a fair chunk. There you are. Now we have here two halves 
to make two worm beds. And what we're going to do, if you look down in here, the bottom here, we'll take that lid out and put a uh, screen wire and hot glue it on there before we put anything in here. And that can be a drain on the bottom. And we've already got a pre-made drain in this system. So all we got to do is set like a sheet of plywood or something over the top of this to cover it. Or we can use some type or ground cloth and weight it down each end. Either way will work, but we got to make runners for these too. So that's what we're going to look at next. All right, these timbers here are going to be the runners for our worm beds. These are 12 foot long 4 by 6s These are going to be our runners. But I'm going to take one of these and cut it in half. And each one of these will make two runners. All right, we're going to build runners. And here's how we're going to make a runner. We're going to take one of these, uh, what's supposed to be a 12 foot long uh, 4 by 6 piece of treated wood. And we're going to cut it in half. You see I've got it measured to, it's supposed to be 12 foot, but it's actually 12 foot 1 inch. So get it in half. Of course, you just go 6 foot and a half inch and mark it, then I'll use a speed square. Now, with a speed square, it's easy to mark wood. You just uh, stick it on one side, and you got an automatic square. Then all you gotta do is go in and mark. Well, not when you're holding the camera. And I'm gonna cut them. We got them marked halfway. I'm gonna have to roll this thing over. That's right. Kick back. You gotta watch these things. I'll kick back on you. These things are real handy to kind of mark things for you. Speed square. I recommend everybody get one of these. One or two, they're real nice. Now, if you ain't pretty, it's gonna be on the ground. And it don't matter because worms ain't got eyeballs, they ain't looking for a Ferrari sports car or whatever you want to run like that. So the key thing is here, I got to also cut out so when it drags on the ground it won't catch on the corner to make it a runner. So this is going to be one of my runners. I've just marked it on the flip side. The key thing about the runner is to make sure that you mark it the same way when you flip it over and that the bottom is the bottom. This is going to be my bottom side. If you were to look here, you'll see the mark angle down this way on both sides. The key thing is you want to make sure that you bevel it the same way. You don't want to cut it for one side to be bottom on one end, the other side to be the bottom on the other end. That's an easy mistake to make. A lot of people actually make that kind of mistake doing this. So, uh, if this is going to be the bottom over here, I got to mark it this way. Again, if you want to double check, that never hurts to double check. Better safe than sorry. Once you cut the wood, you're not adding the wood back on, it's gone. I'll mark it that way. Now I'm going to flip this thing over and uh, mark it where it's the same way over here. Again, this is the bottom edge. So it's got to be angled such that this mark will line up with the other mark. Again, my skill saw won't cut all the way through. That's okay. So I can get it this way. Now double checking. Got all the marks lined up. This side to be the bottom. Again, it don't hurt to double check because, like I said, once you cut the wood off, it ain't going back on. So, uh, I'll start with this edge here. And I line up to this notch right here. There's two notches on here. Then I line my line up to run the steel saw. That's not going to 
come off yet because it's too uh I still gotta flip it over. But I'm gonna get this side before I flip it over. Lot of these timbers are when you cut them in half. Especially if they dried out a little bit. This treated timber can be. I won't use treated timber inside any worm bed, but this is going to be on the ground and not inside the worm bed. be pretty because the ground don't really care too much as long as it works. And worms don't have no eyes. There's a block you can use as wedge, you can get the toys out of. We always use wedges around here, so this box work out pretty good. Now if you look at this, you will see I cut it out so the narrow side is on the, both sides are on the same side. So this is the bottom. So here is a runner. Perfect runner. And it's like the ones on this lid right here. Now what we got to do next is make the notches that we put the uh, Slid into, so I got to cut another runner and notch it out. Go. All right. So, what you want to do is, is you want these runners where they're not splayed out or splayed this way. If you want to pull easy, you want them parallel. Make sure they're parallel. A couple things. I, I like to have them about the same length. So what I've done here is I've taken this large T square and I'm checked that I got the uh, runners at about the same distance from each other. And I checked it on the other end. That ain't got to be perfect. But it's got, it needs to be kind of close, and yeah, it's pretty close. Even that cut's not perfect. So don't sit there and spend an hour trying to line everything up perfectly. You're wasting your time. The other thing is, you want about the same, set them about the same distance from each other. So we kind of started out just by using the, this other sled as a guide, but I think 27 about a quarter inches. You probably got these set out a little bit farther, so you can use any kind of measure to get that. Uh, I'm going to use this tape measure here, and since I'm probably going to bring the outer one in, yeah, it's a little further out, so I'm going to set it about 27 and a quarter. Outside to outside is easy to measure. That's a little bit less, which is about what it is on the other one. Do the same thing over here, and they shouldn't be splayed out this way or that way if you do that. I'm setting these up where I can pull them from either side, and that's what's going to be key here. Always use a square to check things too. Check it down here again. That's close enough. Now, the next thing we want to do is put the basket on it and mark where we're going to make the cuts in the runners. With this basket I've already taken the plastic out. That's not necessary. Uh, when I did that one the plastic was in place. So I'm just going to set it on here roughly midway. And you know it don't hurt if you're off a little bit. But rocket science 
take it from a rocket scientist. This, this ain't rocket science. So what I got here? Almost 13 and a half. And what? Size 11, so I can push it down a little bit that way if I don't step on the glass. Tell me I don't have it sitting square on, square on the top of that. So they can get out of this by measuring the peg. Seven and a half there now. So I think this is going to be where I'm going to mark it. Again, about 12 inches on this side. And I'm just going to mark it right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut out slots to put these runners in. And cut them a little wider than what my pencil mark, pen mark is going to be. It is easy to mark it without the plastic in there. That's not why. And I'll just make the first cut with skill saw. The skill saw really cuts a lot deeper than what I need with this, so I'll just kind of hold it can a little bit so it's not getting the full depth of the cut. And the cut will still be a lot deeper than I need. Here into the weeds and uh, ready to start cutting again. And so, sitting down flat, I'm going to kind of hold it up just so it won't go as deep. But it'll still go way deep. I mean, this thing, if I set it all the way flat, it will cut down about here. If it cut down so deep, this thing will break. And that's the same way, it don't matter. I'm just going to take out some of this material. Put this one a little wider. There you go, guys. I don't want to cut exactly what I'm marking these bars because it's going to make it a really tight fit. That way it's that tight. The reason I don't want that tight is because this metal is not straight. That may not fit in exactly where you want if you make it too tight. It's kind of got a bit of a roundness to it. I like the way that one's cutting, so I worked it a little bit more. Now we can either use a sawzall or a chisel to take those out. Wood chisels work pretty good. So the saw is awesome. Now the wood chisel. You ain't gotta. You ain't gotta go too deep with these. And it going This one just go too deep. Now this blade is wider than my piece, so I can just turn it sideways. So it broke off. Pretty much down there where I cut it in the first place. That went real fast. That's kind of what you expect. This thing won't set all the way down in that. faster than using the saws off. Well, that one broke off where I'm cut. See, the thing is, the grain is running this way. So that makes it easy to cut and knock out in that direction. 
it just break where the grain's running. Just like that. And that's more than enough. It's not even at the bottom, but that runner's not going to set all the way down in here anyway because the plastic won't let it. So we'll probably, y'all might line these up again on But anyway, when I line them up the first time for marking, so once these holes are cut, it ain't going to matter as much. But well, frankly, this is faster than using the saws off. But you can take the saws off blade and cut this way and cut that way and get it deep enough. Sometimes the old-fashioned hammer and chisel can be faster than a power tool. I think that's what we got here. Jawed before I went back and got it again. And I'll clean them out pretty much. I don't think the chisel's a lot of work or not. Sometimes the chisel and the hammer is really fast. I'm going to use this tube of sticks here to make. Uh, cross members for the sled rails and will also be what we'll pull from. We'll put one on each side. And they're about 27 and a quarter, 27 and a half uh, inches apart on the sled rails. The first one is 27 and a quarter. So we'll cut these for the first one. Okay, so I'm going to cut off this one. And then I'm going to use that piece to measure and cut the next one. It'll be the same. But she's hot, hot full of saw horses a little closer together here. Get this one. Yeah. And you might say, Greg, that ain't exact. Well, you know, it ain't got to be exact. It's just got to work. It don't have to be pretty. My worms don't have eyes. So they don't really care. They're not going to complain too much to me one way or the other. That's the great thing about having worms. They don't complain. They don't bark. They don't crow. They're pretty nice livestock to have around. And we're going to cut again. There we are. The I'm going to put this, we're going to try to put this on here now. Drop it in place. As we measure to them. And yeah, there we go. Now it's down, they're down in a groove to some degree. Now we're just going to have to put something across the top of the runners to hold them in place. Maybe some plumber strap or something like that might do the job or some kind of strap just to go over that. And we'll put a cross piece here to pull from on each side. I'm going to mash these brackets down with a hammer. Mash them down a little bit. There we go. That's good enough. On well, these get in the way when you're trying to get in here and drill. I'm using an extension on here on this drill system. And I can't do all this with one hand, just to give you an idea what I'm doing. Also, I'm, uh, uh, this is going to get attached after I put these in place because I won't have as much room to operate otherwise. I tend to use both hands to start it because I can't really start it with one hand. But now i got to start it just to show you how this operates. So this extension, I can get around all this brackets and stuff that would normally be in the way. And get it real nice. That's probably down far enough. I'll put another bracket down. That just gives you an idea about how to do that. Down the cross piece here. We left enough room in here to get a chain around or a strap for your hand if you need to get down in it. You get your hand all the way through it. You just got to be able to get your hand through things. Really matters around here. Hard spot now, 
what you can see here is we got screws in here. We're going to put some more. As I said, I can get my hand down in here and through here. That's probably the most important thing. We also That means I can get chains through there and straps around it and so forth. And I can pull from that bar. It's also going to provide cross strapping between these. And then we got a screw, uh, put some brackets down there to hold that down. On this piece, uh, I had a screw crack right here, the board, so I don't have any strength. So I came back here and added another one on the same line. I had these two knots in here. Now I don't want to put a screw too close to either knot, so I went in the middle here. That should be enough. We got three screws over here. They're in good spots. So I should be able to hold it. Once you get going, you can get these suckers in quick. Okay, our next step with these uh, sled beds is going to be to put screen wire over the holes so I can uh, drain them out. Unfortunately, uh, we just had a really good gully wash of rain. And uh, as you can see, these collect a lot of water in this rain. It rained pretty good here a little bit ago. So in order to do the wire, i got to get the water out. Now I could drain it out like that, but I'm a little impatient today. So instead, I'm just going to flip it over and get it out that way. The good thing about cutting these in half, even though I got these big timbers in the bottom, it's really not that heavy. Look at this. So with one hand, I can tip this whole thing over. The whole sled bed. At least while it's empty. I wouldn't be able to do this, and this is one of the heavier ones. Because this is the bottom. But da uh, Now that's the top. I need to take that piece out. But these are lightweight. Use my left hand. I'm an old man. This is no problem. Now look at that. Look at this. I got a whole train of sled cars. Yes. We're going to make a lot of sleds here. As you can see. All I got to do is put some hot glue, screen wire in the bottoms. Some of the bottoms look like this. I got the valve. So, and those have a little different bottom, so they stand a little higher up than the ones that. That was the actual the forklift pickup bottom. Oh, so uh, now we're going to uh, hot glue the screen wire in place. And but first, I am going to make a little pattern in here of a little zigging and zagging and. Get some of this glue. Alright, so we're going to put down a whole bunch of glue here. And we'll put that wire on top of it before it gets cold. I've had to dry this thing out. Now, typically in a uh, bathtub or something where you got a hole and you don't put screen wire in, you just put wood on it and hold it in place. But since I'm going to move these around, then that's not going to work. And because I don't want this to burn my hands, this glue, I'm going to have something to kind of press the screen wire down on top of it. And I don't have glue. This is where it's catching in some spots. There we go. And it's working to some degree. So I'm putting some down from the bottom, some from the top. And maybe we need a bigger piece of wood to kind of hold things down, but I don't want glue on So it's catching in spots. Now this is an experiment. Stick or something to kind of apply this down. Okay, now we're going to put the screen wire on this hole here to uh, keep the compost in, the worms in, let the, the leak, uh, let the uh, water leak through. That's what we call leachate. Let the leachate leak through. Now it might be better to do the rim first, but it ain't going to hold flat because that wire screen has the memory of a curl in it. So I'm going to at least tack it down on the corners. We can come back to these edges a little better later. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm just tacking it down out right here on the corners real good with the glue, smashing it through. Get a lot of glue here. Smash it through. This handy dandy Gatorade jug. We're a recycling center here for nothing else. We recycle everything. And 
Gatorade jugs and find a lot of use in this apartment here. So I think that's going to hold the corners down. And it does. Good. Now I'm going to get the rims and I'm just going to have to pump, 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 smash, pump, pump, oh, my lid come off. Yes, I'm unscrewing some screw mashing here. Pop, pop, get some glue. Glue for you. And the whole purpose of this is to make a nice glue surface here to hold this screen down. Of course, you know, the pressure of the compost is going to have to hold it down too, but uh, I don't want this thing to come out when I'm driving around pulling it with my tractor. Now, if you're just doing a worm bin, which is a bathtub, you could just take screen wire and put rock on it or, or something like that and it'll hold in place. But uh, for what this application, I ain't going to cut it. I'm going to get a little glue out of here. There we go. Now we got a nice glob of glue. And I'm trying to get it through the screen by mashing it down, dragging it around. I didn't promise this was a quick job. It is taking a minute to get on around the work surface here. But I think the main thing, this rim sticks up. The problem is that the plastic bed of the IBC tote is not flat. It was a design with a spec for somebody to come in here and hot glue screen wire tape. You IBC tote designers add that to your spec next time y'all design IBC totes so that guys like me will be a lot happier. Now, I almost got to cut her all the way around. We'll write down on the blue stick in a moment. And I'll come back and a little bit more in here. Okay, let's see how this is working. Yeah, it's, it's holding. I'll try real hard, I'm seeing I can rip it up, but it's holding. So, I think that'll work for now. We'll try that. If this does fail, I can always put the cap back in and drill little holes along the edge and put wet sand in it, just like I do my barrel has. I don't always do that, uh, but I think this is going to work. Okay, for this one, we got this little valve here. It's kind of hard to reach in here, so I've cut a smaller piece, and I'm going to focus on gluing it down here first. Be careful, I almost got my finger. That would not be a good situation. I'm positive of that, because this glue is very, 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 very hot. It is molten, and it will take the skin off your finger. I just did it. Nice. I'm working there where it's so slick. I like the bottom. That's going to work pretty nice too. Real good block of glue here. I'm going to try to mash it through with a, with a bottle. I'm going to place a little bit. Here, where I can kind of get an interface, and I'm going to come around to. I'm going to use the head of this thing to push it in the wires, the head of the glue gun itself. I'm going to try to get around this lip here as much as I can. This is a very unholy geometry right here I'm working with at the moment. some or evacuate this the good thing is this is a valve it's not going to leak unless I turn it on and the alternative would be you could just take screen wool and stuff it in that hole that might be the smarter thing to do but I'm kind of stuck right now on trying this hot glue experiment 
think that's going to hold right there. Okay. I'm not going to be able to yank, but I'm going to now come back up here on the top side. dry there. See how that goes. Like I said, I'll find in the future that's not a great idea. I'll just stuff spring, uh, still wool down the hole like that. That'll work too. The whole idea is just to keep the compost from coming down and blocking up the drain and be able to keep the drain open. Should that fail and I find I can't use this approach at all, I could always close the drain off and come in and drill small little holes and cover them with wet sand and that will let the leach yet leak through and keep the compost ones on the inside. So there's more than one way to skin this catfish. But this is what we're trying for now and we'll see how it works out. The screen wire will be good over the hole to keep the compost in, and let the moisture out, keep the worms in, but it won't keep the moles out. Moles will tear right through that. So I've got one other level of protection that I'm gonna evoke, and that is this hardware cloth. A mole really is gonna have a hard time tearing through this stuff and uh, you can cut this stuff with a grinder by the way and the grinder is probably the fastest way uh, now I cut that stuff believe it or not with the scissors the uh, screen wire but this stuff can, well at least snips will cut it now it would be easier to do if I had uh, both hands doing it but just to show you I normally cut hold this stuff apart with two hands so I'm using my feet to do the job here and get in here and cut a couple of these at a time. Can't really do it with one hand holding the camera. But this just gives you an idea. I'm gonna lay a piece of this into each one of those and I'll cut out another piece and add, cut it in half and add a couple pieces to the, uh, finish out the four that I've got right now with screen wire in the bottom. And I got four more of these to chop up and making the sled beds also. I'm planning to build a lot of these. I need a lot more worm beds. I got a lot, but I need a lot more. And this is my new method I'm trying out. Let's hope it works because I'm investing in it pretty heavily. Just to show I can get three of these at a time with the snips when I'm got both hands free to go in here and work this. I buy this hardware cloth in big rolls. I get it from hardware stores. You can get it in Lowe's and places like that. You can see them in the process here of snipping this stuff off. And I can't hold it and hold the camera and snip at the same time, but this is what I'm doing. When you're handling on hardware cloth or screen wire, be careful. All those little ends, they'll get you. And they get me too. So, uh, nothing new. But I'm used to it. So, I uh, remember, I'm the guy that likes playing a briar patch. So, uh, pull up briars, blackberry bushes. So, just be careful. If you've not had a lot of jaw shot, you probably need one. If you get cut and scraped all the time by tools, and you're probably immune and don't need a lot jaw shot, but I'm not a doctor. Don't take my advice, go to the doctor and, and do whatever he says. But uh, that's just the thing. I probably have a pretty good immunity to this stuff. I'm out here doing this stuff all the time. A lot of people are going to die when the grid goes down because they're going to get a cut or a nick. Something simple like that and they'll get infected and, and they'll have no way to treat it. And uh, their immune system is not capable to handle it. And lots and lots of people will probably die of minor cuts and scrapes. Uh, so uh, one good way to avoid that, of course, we'll get a lot jaw shot, it'll be good for some few years. But if you're always doing stuff, then uh, your immune system is probably a lot better shape and you're not going to be as likely to die of such things. Now don't, if you die, don't hold me liable for that because I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical per person at all. I'm just telling you what I know and what I've heard and how I operate. And that and... Uh, a handful of bucks will buy you a cup of coffee in some places as long as it's not seven bucks. <laughs> anyway, just letting you know you, uh, there is some hazard handling stuff you can get cut. Well, this is a real pretty glue job I got going here. You can see how I've got it glued all the way around the outside edges. And also how we got it around the rim of the hole. Got this glue all the way two levels. So that glue is nice and pretty looking. The more you do this, the better you get at it. I'm not worried about leaves so much in this thing because they're all going to turn to compost. I want leaves now so they don't have to be cleaned out. That wire, I can put a block of wood on it to kind of hold it down temporarily. Honestly, when I throw feet, uh, manure on it, 
compost, whatever, it'll flatten out and it'll pretty much stay in place uh, and uh, reinforce that screen wire. That's the one I wanted to glue down. This bigger wire don't need to be glued. I might try it just to play around with it, but it don't need it. Just throw the compost on it. She's good to go. Because the weight of the compost is going to press it down. And the moles aren't going to, be, they're just going to be trying to tear through it in that little hole. They're not going to be able to do anything. They're not going to be able to move that and work against the force of all that compost on that wire. So, it's good enough like that. In fact, it's probably better if I don't glue it. If I glue it and it comes loose, then they got all that extra junk to deal with. So, I think that's the way I'm going to leave it. When tying these off, you don't need a crazy knot. A crazy knot is just something that's going to be hard to untie. All I do is just flip that under. Just like that. And believe it or not, that's going to hold. One improvement I'd like to make is probably notching out this back side here. Because these ropes tend to move back and forth as I move this thing, make them pull sideways. Okay, when you pull like this, the cool thing about these kind of slip knots, uh, kind of easy to get loose. You basically just got to pull some loose from that end, pull them around. Oh, wow, you see that? Pulled all that weight and a knot. It just slipped through. Not even a real knot. Cover these warm bed sleds for now. We're just attaching two befores to this uh, plastic fabric, which can be used as a ground cloth. I believe this is known as Typhar or one of the other variants. I get this stuff uh, six foot wide, 300 foot rolls. I don't know, it runs 100, 200 dollars. It's been a while since I bought any because I've been using it quite a bit of it for a while, and it just keeps going. The purpose of this is to keep some varmints from coming in here and. Hopefully deter some of the worms from crawling out. It's not a perfect shield, but it will help. I'm going to put a, a sheet of plywood across the top. There's still going to be enough gaps along here that uh, some air will be able to flow in and out. Big thing I got to watch is these uh, stops that stick up from the what's left over from the uh, see the gravity is pulling that one from the other side. I'm going to have to pull it back up. Uh, just let see. I've already got horse manure in here. Well composted horse manure. Some of these stick up. Maybe I can just cut a piece of hose pipe and fold it over to keep them jabbing anything. The only other thing I'm going to do is cut, like I said, cut a piece of plywood and put them over. Anyway, worm bed sleds. This is my greatest worm bed, worm farm innovation. All right, I now have an entire train of worm bed sleds, and they have worm poop in them. Not worm poop, that's going to be worm poop. It's horse poop right now. And this is the tie bar, ground cloth type material. I'm going to cover it in. We're just going to put some two befores over it initially. Now to hold it for me, channel, I'll show that in a little bit. For now I'm going to drag this one in place in just a moment. Ho, ho, ho. Hitch to a sleigh and off we go. We're about to fire up this tractor again. I've got one of my worm bed, sled beds. Sled worm beds, whatever you want to call it, it's to the tractor here. And this is a diesel tractor, so I have to heat up the glow plugs before I crank it. Here, she's starting to get hot. That's the end.
Craig, why did you back up the side you sled to tie to it? Well, because my alternator's not putting out. If I have to turn the tractor off, I might not be cranking it back up. And it's a neutral. If I pull down in front of this sled, it, it goes too far forward. I can't reach it with the strap. So you have to improvise a lot when you farm. These little stobs here can cut you bad. They're what's left where I cut these IBC totes. And if you're like leaning over working on worm bed, if you put your hand on that, that could cut you. So I'm having them to make them safer. To do that, I'm taking this old rotten hose pipe, and you know, if you're running a market garden, you got plenty of old rotten hose pipe around. And I'm taking this sharp knife here. This is almost, it's almost like a carpet blade kind of knife. And I'm cutting sections of this hose. Pocket knife might not cut it so well, but that works pretty good. You can see all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange this stuff the way I want it to go on before I stick it on so it'll go fast. So I know it's going to be easier to pull this through if I, if I have this pointed this way. I know how it pulls through. If you've done a few of these, you get used to it. I don't want to get it pulled far enough to catch yet. And so I'm going to take this and go ahead and fold it over. And I'm going to slip this over it. And I'm going to get it started. Just barely started. And then I'm going to slip it. I don't want to get too started because I don't want to make it so tight it won't slip down over this. Then I'm just going to slip this over here. Fold it down. And then uh, I can just pull the zip tie tight. Like so. And then I'll cut that off a little bit with some pliers. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I can cut it off with this for that matter. Be careful cutting. That's it. That's all you got to do. Pliers or a knife. And just install these all the way around. And you got it made. This is my sled bed, worm bed. Now you can see the ends I'm putting on these poles. They're sticking up where I chopped this IBC tote in half. Basically I'm cutting hose pipes into sections and bending it over and zip tying it in place. Quick and dirty way to place all these uh, safety barriers I'm making is just to pre-cut everything and pre-place everything. That makes it go a lot faster for you. And the thing about these ties are, if you look at them edge on, they go in this side and come out the side that sticks up. Yeah, this side that sticks out is where they come out. I just like to snip these wire ties off the pliers so this one don't fall. I'm going to kind of hold it back and see if I can snip it one hand. Well, I'm going to work. I'm going to hold back a little bit. I'm not going to pick it up. But on me, I'm using two hands to do that kind of stuff instead of holding one hand on the camera. Next thing you want to do your sled bed, worm bed, is just get out all this pine straw because. Worms don't like the rising from pines. It just, it's just an irritant to them. I mean, I have had pine straw in beds and worms thrive okay, it seems, but well, frankly, it's an irritant. They don't like it. And I try to keep it out as much as I can. It's kind of hard to do when I'm in a forest full of pine trees. And it's not all pine trees. It's these lower levels are typical to a forest of hardwood, but the tall canopy is indeed pines. And I'm not even picking out the regular leaves because they'll compost down real good. And I don't, you don't have to get them all out. So, you know, it's Pareto's Law. Get 80% of them. That last 20% is going to take you 80% of the work. So Pareto's Law is an important thing to remember. Sometimes you have to get things 100%. Some you don't. As long as you get most of them here, that covers it, I think. I'm also cramming some leaves out, which I don't really want to do. Like I say, they worms can tolerate some of these, but by and large, they are an irritant. And I'm just trying to get them out. Give my little wormies a break because I want happy little wormies. Happy little wormies is going to make me happy. And if you're really wondering, this is horse manure mostly. Yeah, maybe a little leaf litter. I got some leaf litter. I'm putting some of these too. Much of leaf litter. Leaf litter is my favorite. But I'm getting what I can right now. Okay, the next thing I've got on this worm bed is a cover. 
this is my first line cover this cover can breathe of course there are going to be some cracks along here for air to get through too and uh, it's a breathable cover it will let water through and so I will put something else on here I used to just use sheets of poly or lay tin or something on top Strictly speaking, this sheet of poly like this might do with maybe a 2 before on to keep from blowing off. This one's dirty because I just dug it out of the bunch of leaves. But what I'm going to do in this case is put plywood over the top. I'm going to cut a piece of plywood. And the reason I'm going to cut plywood is uh, to keep the raccoons out. I've got a real raccoon problem here. And uh, most places don't have to contend with that as much as I do. But the raccoons are little bandits and they will tear in the worm bed and eat all the worm food and the worms too. They will clean me out. So I have to build my worms to be mole proof and uh, raccoon proof. Hopefully my screen wires in the bottom will keep the moles out. Hopefully they won't climb up around over this and get in here. We will see. And this is just a uh, ground cover or uh, tie par. And I've taken some 2 by 4s they don't have to be fancy, those are actually a little bit rotted out, old 2 by 4s And I've stapled the tie par on them, just to give them weight, to hold them in place. That's the whole function of that, I just got them on two sides, so I'll hold this cover on. Nothing fancy, real simple, stapled on, you know, eventually that might come loose, I'll just staple on some more, it's no big deal. Nothing fancy at all. And then we'll cut some uh, plywood and put it on top, and we're done. Basically, we're already done. This is the sled bed, worm bed. Okay, this used to be a door on top of one of my plywood boxes that rotted out. And I um, took it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to salvage this door and use it on top of my uh, uh, sled bed, worm beds as a barrier to keep raccoons out. And I just marked it right here at the four foot level. And I marked it on the other side. And just what happens is there's already a line across here. I brought my caulk line out here, but I'm not even going to need it because it's already got a mark right at the four foot level here. So strangely enough, you might see it there. So I'm not even, it might be from a previous marking or a scoring mark for when they made the wood. I see there's various scoring marks in here, but that lines up just perfect. And quite frankly, this thing is four foot wide. If I cut it four foot deep, it's going to be a little bit bigger than it needs to be because those... Uh, IBC totes are uh, 42 by 48 and this don't even need to actually fully cover the top of them it just needs to cover most of it so a raccoon can't get in and this wood's too heavy for a raccoon to pick up so that's the main objective is to keep the raccoons out and probably it will help with that type R netting over to also keep the moles out the moles would dig through otherwise this might be the final little thing that keeps them from doing so all the bear you can get is good yeah moles can climb believe it or not. So uh, we're going to skill saw cut this and take a piece back there. And go. Good enough. And this piece will be good enough. All right, here is the sled bed, worm bed, all complete. This is basically just my raccoon guard. Raccoon can't pick that up. And it also holds rain off the, the worm bed. It don't have to be perfect. It'll keep a raccoon out and or a possum. And that tie par in conjunction with that will probably keep the moles out also given that this is a climbing challenge for a mole. Even though those little suckers can't climb, I've discovered. So, what I gotta do is just add my worms, and when they're ready to harvest, hook up the tracker, out through the woods, back around to the barn, the trommel, and run worms. And then I can fill it up with compost, put fresh worms in it, and bring it right back here. Bam! No wheelbarrow, feeding water to the worms while it's out here. And all I gotta do with that is just take off the plywood, take off that little top bar section. And we're at it. And I can slide me a little kitty litter pan under some of these to collect the, the drippings. But this one is not one that needs that. That's one that's going to have to have the kitty litter pan slipped under it. This one actually has a valve on it. I just got to clear this debris out and slip a pan out up under there. Open the valve and voila, it'll all come dripping out. 
And that's about half cocked open right now. She's closed now. So we'll alternately open and close it. I think I'll just open that when I want to drain it out. That way it won't be alerting the moles to the proximity that there's worms here. Constant drippings and smell would alert them. I don't want to get them excited. Now this is hard packed dirt. Might be a little hard for the mole to dig in, but not too bad. They will come through dirt. But this is pretty hard packed, believe it or not, once I get the leaves off. Uh, but you won't find mole tracks here in the forest, but you will find when they get in the worm beds. So that's something to look out for. Anyway, hope you enjoyed my video. Again, be sure to bang the update notification bell for future videos. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Check all my links below to support my channel. Because if you want to buy worms, greengregs.com, www.greengregs.com. Prepper Supply is my patron supply. And seeds for your garden, you can get at Tree Leaf Market. Links below. Thank you for watching.